So then the other drug that uh, obviously is well known to the audience uh, in, in more standard myeloma is now getting a look in the smoldering myeloma, daratumumab, the antibody-based therapy. So your thoughts on this trial from Hopmeister and colleagues. So this is another study for smoldering myeloma. All of a sudden there are now all these trials going for smoldering myeloma. So it's a randomized phase I didn't phase even know there was smoldering myeloma years ago. Now it's uh, more common than myeloma. <laughs> the myeloma like. field is changing so <laughs> rapidly. Every six yeah. months there is new data. That, there will be five new drugs in the coming right. five years, I do think. There will right. be so much new coming. So this trial by Hofmeister is a randomized phase two trial with uh, 123 patients. There are 41 patients in each arm. So the one arm has only eight weekly doses of daratumumab, mm -hmm. uh, the CD38 monoclonal naked antibody. Mm -hmm. uh, the other two arms go up to a total of three years, mm -hmm. and they are different in terms of the intensity of the dosing. Mm -hmm. And the study has uh, two cool primary endpoints. The one endpoint is complete response rate at six months, and the other one is progression-free survival at 12 months. Mm -hmm. And according to the abstract, there is a progression-free survival difference already at 12 months of follow-up in this patient population. Mm -hmm. So here you have it, John. Yeah. Maybe we should start thinking about early treatment. Mm -hmm. Great, great. <laughs> Okay. Well, and then that leads us obviously to biomarkers because like, like in every malignancy, but particularly when you have some heterogeneity in the clinical outcomes and trying to choose therapy, and we have Bustoros and colleagues, and I know this has been an area that just like in leukemia, just like in lymphoma, the molecular profiling of one sort or another to try to predict who's going to do better and worse and, and treatment. Uh, insights on that from this, this report. I think this is, a, this is an interesting study. It's from the group up in Boston. They have taken close to 200 patients and they have mm -hmm. conducted whole exome sequencing and they have done whole genome sequencing on a subset of these patients, deep whole genome sequencing. And really the idea they have is to see whether you actually genetically can predict who is going to go into multiple myeloma. Mm -hmm. There is no study that so far really has done that in full resolution. And I think this study doesn't fully answer but it provides a lot of new clues. So it shows, for example, that mutational burden is higher in what we clinically refer to as high-risk smoldering myeloma. They look at the number of mutations per megabase pair, and it's mm -hmm. 1.4. And if you look at studies that look at multiple myeloma, it's 1.6. And then they look at the low-risk smoldering myeloma, and in that group, it's around 0 0.7. So it's almost a doubling. They mm -hmm. also look at mutations, somatic mutations in pathways that are known to be important in myeloma, and there are striking significant differences, uh, and they do different types of analysis, and they show there are differences. Mm -hmm. What they do not show here, at least in the abstract, is really how the mechanisms work, and if this is something that could be used for, for treatment, could you use this as targets? So there's more work to be done, but it's, it's very exciting. Great. So, so to reiterate then, as we move from smoldering, then it sounds like outside of a trial, really not standard to treat patients at this point? Yes, that is absolutely right. Great, but uh, certainly it sounds like well, that may change before too long. I think uh, so. Yeah, excellent, great.